Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial on how to build the Mantis Claw. So if you're wondering what a Mantis Claw is, it's just a very basic, simple device which allows you to pick things up, like so. The claw is made primarily of sheet material which has been cut using laser or water jet. Uh, you can use any material you want. Uh, this particular claw is going to be made from 3mm perspex. It's worth noting that the thickness of the material you use affects the size of the claw that you end up with. So here, for example, is a claw that I've made using 1.2mm stainless. Now, because the geometry of the components is such that some have to slot into others, the thickness of the material is very important and it effectively dictates the size of the claw. So this is the kind of size you can expect to get from a 3mm thick sheet, and this is the kind of size that you can expect to get from a 1.2mm thick sheet. So as well as your sheet components, you're also going to need one or two fixings. Uh, most of these will be available on eBay, and the exact dimensions of the fixings that you need to get will be explained in detail in the blueprints. So before you do anything else, go to the link below and download the drawings for these components. If you have access to a laser cutter at home, uh, or if you have access to a laser cutter at university, or perhaps a local hack space, you should be able to cut these out quite easily. So here are our components. We found that using 3mm perspex, we could actually fit all of the components on one sheet of A4 perspex, which we can demonstrate now by covering them up completely with this A4 sheet of paper. If you're very efficient away about the way you lay out your components, you can make good use of your material. So as well as the components, you're going to need some fixings to hold the claw together. Now the size of the fixings that you use is going to depend on the size of the claw that you're making. Uh, but in the case of the 3mm Perspex claw that we're making today, we're going to be using these M5 times 12 screws. We need 20 of those. And then to go with those, we're going to need 20 M5 nuts. We're actually using half nuts, but you could use full nuts. Um, you will also need this large M10 bolt, which goes down the centre of the claw. And to go with that, we're going to need this large M10 dome nut. So you may require some tools to, to make your claw. Uh, you're going to need a screwdriver, obviously, because you're using these little screws. Now, depending on the size of the screws that you're using, you might want a smaller screwdriver than this, but this is perfect for my application. Um, you're going to need an Allen key, which goes for this, with this bolt in the middle. You might not necessarily need this, because you can generally fasten this finger tight, but it's good to have it there just in case. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is some Yoohoo, or alternatively some Loctite. And the reason for that is because if you're going to use the claw for something, uh, then the, generally speaking, the, you'll find the nuts tend to sort of vibrate loose uh, after you use it a few times. So the first thing you want to do is grab one of these bases and proceed to put the shoulder pieces in, like this. You want to put all the shoulder pieces in. Then you're going to grab the other base piece and you're going to put it on top of those. It should slot in. It's a little bit fiddly sometimes, but it should go, like so. Next what you're going to do is take your large bolt and put it up through the bottom of this base and then screw in your dome nut at the top. It only really needs to be finger tight for now. So the next thing you're going to do is take one of these pieces, and these pieces slot into the top here. You've got two holes, one is for these, and one is for these. So the first thing you're going to do is take this arm and attach and put it point first. You've got one end with a round bit and one end with a point. You want the point to go in to the base, and you're going to take one of your screws and put it through. And then what you want to do is take a little bit of your Yoohoo and blob that on. It's up to you whether you want to lock tight your nuts and bolts. If, you, if you're intending to assemble and disassemble it a lot, then you might want to not want to use any glue at all. Uh, I find Yoohoo is quite good. And what you want to do is tighten it until it feels tight and then if you find that this can't move, wind it back about a quarter of a turn. 
and you'll find that this can then move. You want this to be free to move, but you don't want it to be too loose. Next, you're going to take this tendon. Now, this tendon also has uh, an identifying feature on one end. You want that feature not to go on the base. It's the opposite way around this time. The rounded end goes into the base. So using the same shoulder piece as before, we're going to slot that in the bottom so that these holes line up. And we're going to put our screw, one of our small screws, through there. You can put this through either, either way, it doesn't really matter. I just personally prefer to have them all facing the same way. So the next thing you want to do is you want to grab two of these and one of these. Now these kind of interact with each other what you do is you take this wishbone and you put it through this strange looking hole here. Now you'll find that it can fit in one way. If you try and put it any other way, it won't fit in. So you want to fit it in like this with the rest of the wishbone going around this curved end here, like so. The other one goes around the other way, like this. And now what you can do is you can move this downwards and you'll find they're locked in place. So what you want to do then is you want to take this tendon and you're lining it up with this hole here. And you're going to put a screw through that. Again, tighten your bolt so that it gives the whole thing freedom to move a little bit. Next, what you're going to do, this is the fiddliest part. You'll find that this wishbone has some spring in it. And that's necessary because what you're going to do is you're going to fold the wishbone down and pull it apart a little bit so that it then goes over these two pieces. And you'll find that there's a recess just here where it'll clip in, like so. Now what you can do is line up your arm with this hole and put a screw through that. So you can kind of see how this thing's going to take form now. That's one leg complete. All that's left to do is exactly the same for the remaining four legs. So there we go, here's the finished product. I think it looks pretty good, you can see the action working. Uh, one thing I may have forgot to mention is that if you want it strung up on a string like this one is, you're going to have to drill a small hole in the top of this dome nut, which I have done. It's not too hard to do if it's made of brass or nylon, uh, but if it's made of stainless steel you might struggle with that, you'll have to have quite a hard tool. Um, so I suggest brass or nylon uh, nuts and bolts in general. So that is the end of the tutorial, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions regarding this project, please leave them in the comment section below and someone will try and get back to you.